And then after a year, I think I'd earn £8,000, which apparently um, put me in the top 1% <laughs> of actors in the UK. And, and obviously, when you've got a wife and a, a, and a child to support, that's not obviously going to be enough. So um, I remember sort of seeing some friends and saying, look, you know, I can't believe I sold my business, I was earning good money, and now I'm doing this, and it's not working out, and it's not happening quick enough. And one of them, it was one of them sort of light bulb moments when someone said, um, you know, why don't you, what do you want to do? And I said, I wouldn't mind doing film. And they said, well, why don't you make a film? How difficult is it? You organise events for 20,000 people, how hard is it to put together a film? So I thought about it, and then I thought, okay, let's find a script. So we found a script, um, and literally I went around to all my friends and said, do you want to put 10,000 each in them? We might film, it'd be a laugh. Um, and that was, um, like going to film school, really. <clears throat> that led to a film called Rise of the Foot Soldier, which um, you might not be into true crime films, I don't know, but that was probably one of the most violent, probably one of the most popular British crime films ever made, you know, in the last 10 years anyway. Um, and, you know, it sold just under a million DVDs, which is a lot of DVDs to sell. We were basically making British movies, low budget British movies, that was their thing. And then we looked at it and said, actually, why don't we try and up the ante and make things slightly bigger? So we did a film called Saving Santa, which was a 3D animation. Um, but that was made again on a low budget, but that had um, Martin Freeman, Joan Collins, Tim Curry, Tim Conway, Ashley Tisdale, Noel Clark, a really good cast. And um, yeah, that done over 10 million at the box office worldwide. And um, the Weinstein Company picked that up. And that sort of put us into a slightly, it changed the dynamics of what we were doing because we were the sort of low budget brick flip makers and then we sort of thought, well actually we want to do something a bit bigger. That sold throughout the whole world. We've got two really good people that we're working with on that. Um, and, um, you know, David's been fantastic. You know? and, and really, people that he's attracted to the projects and the projects that he's got, the, the, the screenplays, are things that, you know, I might not necessarily have come across because yeah. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have said I'm gonna develop these projects because um, you know they're they're things that David actually was attached to and he brought to me and said, look, you know, I want to make these, what do you think? And um, so so really he's he's, he's taken me, he's led me into in a different direction which which I which I love because I think you can't ever sit in a comfort zone. After this one, we've got um, a film we're doing about um, Jack Spot and Billy Hill called Once Upon a Time in London. And obviously because of Peaky Blinders and Boardwalk Empire and, um, you know, Working Toll remaking The Craze with Tom Hardy, mm. we thought, well, you know, we developed this project probably about three years ago, but just left it on the shelf. And now it's on Vogue. We, we pulled that out and we're, David's going to direct that. And that's um, about the birth of organised crime in England with uh, about Jack Spot and Billy Hill. and. What's interesting is it's set on the backdrop of the 1940s and 1950s, so that's going to be the next project that we do.